Now, I'm not going to linger up here joyfully. We are going to welcome Reverend John Scott, who is back fresh and sparkling from a wonderful holiday, wonderful cruise, and I'm sure we're going to hear all about it and all the lessons that, we, that he has learned that he's going to pass on to us today. Please help me welcome Reverend John. Morning, family. As I was leaving the prayer room this morning, Jennifer said to me, you've been away too long. And I don't know, how, you know, this is just such an amazing place, this Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And this is such an amazing country. No matter where I go and what I am doing, it just is the most wonderful experience to come back home. So I want to thank you all for keeping the home fires burning and the Temple of Light light shining as I sail the blue seas and put down the responsibilities of, of pastorship for a, a few weeks. And I am back refreshed and renewed and want to just thank you for being part of my ministry and part of my journey. Special welcome to those who join us uh, on the World Wide Web and welcome to you all. It's just such a beautiful, oh, what a beautiful morning. It truly is here in beautiful Jamaica. Now, I want you to know that on August 25th, 2019, a group of adventurous Jamaicans led by uh, one of our own, we call him Captain, Captain Theo Smith, discovered Alaska. <laughs> well, if we could have been discovered by Columbus and why we were here all the time, I don't see why we can't discover Alaska. And I want you to know that on our stateroom doors on board the ship, we had the Jamaican uh, the Temple of Light um, post uh, stickers so that you could identify the cabins in which the Jamaicans were housed. Um, I think that the boat that we were on was a, a tad big, bit, a, a big, bit bigger than the Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria. In fact, it was a ginormous 1,138 feet, that's 347.1 meters long, and 136 feet, 41 meters wide. Its 18 decks tower 204 feet, that's 62.2 meters above the water. And the 1,500 international crew members lavish attention and impeccable service on their 4,905 guests. While a total of 72 engine crew, including 42 fully qualified engineers, keep the 168,666-ton floating city cruising at 23.4 knots. Wow. Wow. The state-of-the-art cruise ship named Ovation of the Seas includes all of the, it has three new features not found on cruise ships anywhere. One is a ripcord by iFly. It is a simulated skydiving exercise. You're in a glass tube and the, the wind blows you up so that you actually saw, I didn't do it. <laughs> and then there is a, 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 an observation capsule known as the North Star. It's a, it's a, a glass capsule which hoists you 300 feet above the 18 stories high that you are already into the air and then swings out over the ocean, affording you breathtaking and I assure you gut-wrenching, gut-churning views. After which you can order a drink to steady your nerves at a bionic bar where the drinks are mixed and served entirely by robots. So, as you said, wow. When I think that just maybe 110 years ago, people's minds were being boggled by the Model R Ford, the fuel of which was sold in drugstores. And back then, there were only perhaps 8,000 cars in all of America, and only 144 miles of paved roads. I think we've come a long way. The maximum speed limit in most US cities back in 1909 was 10 miles per hour, and the tallest structure in the world was the Eiffel Tower. Incidentally, speaking of fuel being obtained from drugstores, a member of our, our posse 
uh, Mrs. Noel Chisholm is herself a pharmacist, and I don't know if you know this, Noel, but back in those days, marijuana, heroin, and morphine were available over the counter at the corner drugstore. I wonder if we could pick up a, a few grams. <laughs> yes. Oh, the good old days. Back then, pharmacists said, and I quote, heroin clears the complexion, gives buoyancy to the mind, regulates the boils, and is in fact a perfect guardian for your health, unquote. We've come a long way. Back then, life expectancy was a mere 47 years, my friends. And it's not surprising when you consider the fact that 90% of all doctors had no college education whatsoever. They attended so-called medical schools, many of which were condemned in the press as substandard. So you, you can imagine going to the doctor was a, a matter of great risk. So looking out over the ocean as I, as I soared 300 feet above the 18-story high, ovation of the seas, uh, a story, I remembered a story told by um, a, a man called Tom Riley, who is an expert in value-added selling. And he tells a story titled The Master Eagle's Lesson, which I'd like to share with you, because I had a, a strong sense of what it must feel like to be on the edge of a nest all that way up in the sky. So the nest of young eagles hung on every word as the master eagle described his exploits in the great skies beyond their nest. This was an important day for the eaglets. They were preparing for their first solar flight from the nest, and it was the confidence builder many of them needed to fulfill their destiny. How far can I travel? asked one of the eaglets. How far can you see? responded the master eagle. How, how, how high can I fly? quizzed the young eaglet. How far can you stretch your wings? asked the old eagle. Well, how long can I fly? the eaglet persisted. How far is the horizon? the mentor rebounded. How, how much should I dream? asked the eaglet. How much can you dream? smiled the older, wiser bird. How much can I achieve, the young eagle continued. How much can you believe, the old eagle challenged. So frustrated by the banter, the young eagle demanded, why, why don't you answer my questions? I did. Yes, but you answered them with questions. I answered them the best I knew how. But, but, but you are the master eagle. You're supposed to know everything. If you can't answer these questions, who can? You, the old eagle responded. You. Me? How? The young eagle was confused. No one can tell you how high to fly or how much to dream. It is different for each eagle. Only God and you know how far you'll go. No one on this earth knows your potential or what's in your heart. You alone will answer that. The only thing that limits you is the edge of your imagination. The only thing that limits you is the edge of your imagination. The young eagle puzzled by this asked, then what should I do? And the old eagle responded, Look to the horizon, spread your wings, and fly. Friends, that is my message to you this morning. Look to the horizon, look to your potential, look to what you are capable of. Look at the gifts that you have brought to life. Spread your wings and soar to your highest potential. But you know, <laughs> what stops us a lot of the times is that little chatterbox voice inside our head that says, but what if? What if I fail? Worse yet, what if I succeed? What if he or she doesn't like me? What if, what if I don't get the job? 
you know, what if, what if, it's very interesting what what ifs can do to your self-confidence and to how you, how, how you live your life. We were in a little town called Skagway in Alaska, and it was a little town that grew up around the mining, you know, the gold rush and the, look, the search for gold, and charming, quaint little place. And one of the stories that stood out for me as we were, we were on the tour was that the guide said, there are no doctors or hospitals in Skagway. So, residents buy insurance. I think it's 200 and something, I don't remember quite, Noel. Anyway, quite a bit of money per year. And that insurance is so that if they have anything wrong, they can be medevaced out, they can be flown out uh, by aircraft. And so we were up and down shopping and um, what have you. And I, I left my group of friends for a, a, a few minutes to look for a store that uh, somebody had directed me to. And I'm thinking, oh, can you imagine living in a town that, that has no doctor? What if something goes wrong and as my sesa may drop? <laughs> as we say in Jamaica, my, my, my shoe bucked in the pavement, in, in the sidewalk, and my kin pupalik right into the middle of the street. Bruised myself very badly. Uh, fortunately, I do yin yoga and I've learned how to fall, break my fall on my hands. So, uh, I, you know, my hands took the, the weight. But I was just thinking, what if you should have an accident? What if? And the what if catch me. <laughs> so I have a remedy for you, my friends, and it's how to handle what if. You ever have that little voice on you? on your shoulder or in your head saying, what if? Just turn to it and say, thank you for sharing. I'll handle it. <laughs> I'll handle it. Those are three powerful little words. And it brings me to your assignment this morning. I want you, if you decide to undertake this assignment, to make a list of three of your persistent what ifs that keep coming up for you. Just list. The what ifs that plague you, that disturb your peace of mind, that take away your, your joy. And beside each one, write in bold letters, I'll handle it. Can we say that together? I'll handle it. Let us affirm together, through the power of God within me, through, together, through the power of God within me, I can handle all that happens in my life. In a loving and powerful way. With God I can soar to undreamed heights of excellence. God I can soar to undreamed heights of excellence. Because friends, you can, you know, we come fully equipped with all of the talents, the abilities, the capabilities, and the desires and dreams to just ace the game of life. To use a, a car salesman term, we come fully loaded. And it's just something for us to constantly remind ourselves of. Let us say, I'm fully loaded. I'm you better believe it. So friends, we're all going through an eternal process of self-discovery and self-evolution. Each of us is creating our own desti destiny, moment by moment, by our habitual thoughts and deeply held beliefs. When we accept that whatever happens is neither good nor bad, but is an opportunity to discover the power of God's presence in our life, then we can begin to fly rather than crawl. You can follow the, ma the Master Eagle's advice and look to the horizon, spread your wings, and take off, knowing that there is a place of security to which you can always return. And that place of security is the kingdom of God, which Jesus said is within each and every one of us. And that kingdom, or as I like to say, that kingdom, is our true home. One of the great New Thought writers, Eric Butterworth, tells a joke of the caterpillar which looked up and saw a colorful butterfly flitting overhead. He shook his head ruefully and said, they'll never get me up in one of those contraptions. And you know, they never will. A caterpillar simply cannot fly. But the creature will change its embodiment. And as it does, it will become something entirely different 
totally unrecognizable from what it was. And as if by a miracle, suddenly there is a whole new set of principles at work and the creature soars to a whole new potentiality. I told that to my new cohort of participants in the Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life program at the General Penitentiary in downtown Kingston last week. And by the way, I am happy to announce that beginning this week, I'll be starting a new cohort of, for the prison officers. And it's, I've, I've not called it Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life, I've called it leadership. <laughs> You can't call it management because the, the higher of Rocky don't want anybody to manage them. So I'm calling it leadership. And we're starting this week. So uh, just hold me in your prayers too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, the beautiful Jesus recognized this divine potential within us all. And it's what I, I, I spend a few moments just centering myself in the car park at Tower Street before I go in. Show me the divinity in each person that I meet today. Just show me God. God, show me yourself. Shine forth and bless me through these men who have so much to teach and so much to offer life and so much on their journey to learn and to give that they can stop crawling in self-doubt and recrimination and the label society put upon them. And like the young eaglet, soar to their, their destiny and to their, the glory of their spiritual magnificence. As Butterworth puts it, and I quote, you can't make a butterfly out of a caterpillar, and you can't make an egg spread its wings and float lazily over a canyon. More than this, you can't make a good man out of a bad man. This is logical on the human level of evaluation, but in a way beyond knowing, the caterpillar becomes a cocoon and then breaks loose into a winged creature of the air. And the eggshell breaks and the bird steps forth and spreads its wings. And the so-called evil man suddenly sees a new potential in himself and begins to act upon that potential. When we know the truth of this great spiritual potential within us, which Jesus called the kingdom of God within, we are free to become our unlimited self, free to do unlimited things. We see things in a different light. We react to a different set of principles. We draw upon a higher potential, a potential that has always been within us, which has always really been the truth of us. End of that Butterworth quote. Henry David Thoreau, writing in Walden, explains it like this, and I quote, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. He will put something behind, will pass an invisible boundary. New, universal, and more liberal laws will begin to establish themselves around and within him, or the old laws be expanded and interpreted in his favor in a more liberal sense. And listen to this, Thoreau says, and he will live with the license of a higher order of beings. We can all live with the license of a higher order of beings. That's what Jesus did, you know. Jesus discovered and taught the divinity that is innate within all people. And it is this divinity that allows us to live with the license of a higher order of beings. It is this divinity that allows us to look at the storms of life and to say to the upheaval and the discord, peace, be still. It is this divinity that allows us to look beyond appearances and to see the God in our fellow human beings and to call forth that godness, that goodness, that divine potential in every child, in every single person that we work with or play with or meet upon life's path. It is our duty, my friends, to train ourselves to see with the single eye the beauty and the eternality of Almighty God in every single person that we encounter on this journey as we cruise through life 
one port at a time. Happy sailing. Namaste.